What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Clockwork Empires. My name is Splattercat. Stoked to have you here today. So it's come to my attention in the comments that Hump Dizzle over here, Humphrey Steelburn, has been stuck behind this bed for a while. I'll try to get him freed up today so that he could go and get himself fed and doesn't like fall to despair or anything like that. In the previous episode, we had made deals with brigands because there weren't a whole lot of options there. We had to do what we had to do. I am actually going to... It's weird that he can't walk in between that right there, but you know what? I'm going to accept it for right now. If you want to get rid of a module, you just do it right there. So you go to modules and then you dismantle modules. I would like there to be a more inclusive toolbar. Just a, just a little thing that I would like to see is maybe like a big toolbar... I don't know, something like over here or something that just has those general commands around so you got to open things and whatnot. It's fine if not, like it's easy enough to find. It only took me a minute of looking for it, but still, something that I'd be looking for. Uh, we need to get him dug out from behind this bed though because he's stuck. Apparently he went back in here. And this is a common problem with stuff like Namori and whatnot too where sometimes they'll go behind something and build a thing and then they'll get stuck. Immigrants have arrived. We got seven laborers. Good God, we have so many of them. And none of them have jobs. And then they also dropped an airdrop. Praise from the ministry. A letter from the ministry. Congratulations on meeting or exceeding 30 colonists living in your settlement. We present you with this commemorative bar of gold as a material trophy of this tremendous accomplishment. We expect a detailed series of reports on how you prevented all your colonists from going wild and running off into the hills. Hooray! And we got a bar of gold too, so that's pretty sweet. We've also unlocked the tropics. However, we're gonna be we're gonna be playing over here the petrifying rogue archaeologist. There we go, Humphrey Steelburn. He's free at last, free at last. Let's go ahead and we'll see if we can maybe let him out without getting ourselves into trouble again. Like that was lined up right there. Let's try it a little different this time and maybe put it right there so that it's flush with a wall, so we don't have to quite worry about it so much. We do need to build more areas for people to live though. We're at 32 out of 31. We may see some food issues. Luckily, we will telegraph these long in advance, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. I would say we should jump into our overseers, and seeing as we have a huge worker pool, let's add another farmer. Let's add... Carpentry Workshop looks a little light. We'll add another person there just to help out. This farmer needs help as well. We'll give her a full work crew so that she's got people running around doing her thing. We will also fill out our militia. And then in the naturalist office, maybe we'll go one in there and one in there. So the thing that we're going to need from here on in is that we need to build a couple more houses for our people to live inside of, a few more bunk houses, and then from there we can probably get away with... So if I wanted to put beds inside of here, is that possible? Because I want them to sleep inside the barracks. Like, let's say that I got that right there. Oh, I can't. Okay, that's fine. I, I was wondering about it a little bit because it seems like they sleep on the floor inside of our military ministry or whatever the hell it's called the naturalist's office. We've already got somebody assigned there. She should be focusing on scouting. And from what it looks like to me, she has really kind of worked on the map there. We could also do... So what do we have queued up over here? What's going on in this place? We're just making planks. Doing our thing, just planking like crazy. Planking like it's 2006. Okay. That's fine. We can make a church banner. How much bric-a-brac do I have out of curiosity? So bric-a-brac. There's two over there and there's one right there. How many planks am I sitting on? 12? Okay. I could sit on 12 planks. That's not too large of a problem. I would also suggest that we take... Oh, wow. It takes a lot to do a paper stack. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and we'll set this on the same order so that both workbenches are open. From what I understand, if you have an open work order on this bench, they should, if there's nothing else going on, they should come in and help out with this and it's not that big of a deal. But I just wanted to check and make sure. We still got six cots, so those are all ready to go. They should be uh, non-stop planking from here on in. With extra farmers, they should be able to get this done faster. From what I understand is they put in labor. Like, every single time they do this thing right here, it adds one unit. So we can actually speed these up by quite a bit, too, if we just chill for a little bit. It is an overcast day. The clouds have come in thick today, turning everything a rather dull gray. Our crops will grow more slowly, but the colonists don't mind the weather much. It just feels like home, one responds. Yeah, we're getting that English weather out here, too, or Monterey weather, as I like to call it. We got that going on out here, too, where it's just overcast all the time. So these right here, this is a lower class house. This is a trade office. That's a middle class house. Do we seriously only have one middle class house? That's fine if we do. I don't really mind that much. Why did I put a low? That's a middle. That's a middle. That's a trade. Okay, so I didn't. I, I thought I did something that I did not. But in fact, what we need to do now is I'm going to put in our disturbance is reasonably high. We could probably leave it alone for a bit if we didn't have such like a unfortunate lack of places to sleep. 
So that's on great. That's on average. That's on average. Okay. I'll think about getting some rugs and things from the bric-a-brac too so that we can stack. We can put a rug in each of these to give it a plus one. So it'll little be, we'll, we'll invoke our inner D&D. &D. We'll give it a plus one and hopefully that'll be good enough. Oh, we'll treat it like a wedding. Like, here, you get a plus one. You get a plus one. You get a plus one. So for this stuff over here, we're actually going to have to level this out before we can do much else. And so let me go into my zones real fast. And I would very much like to flatten the terrain over here. And then we'll flatten terrain on this side. We don't have a ton of assignments around, but there are still things that could be accomplished. I don't know how much stone we're sitting on, but I'm going to assign them to mine all this out here too. Because that'll help things along. They're over here taking some kind of target practice. I think. But we've got a good enough military to where I'm not worried too much about things. And if some of them die, oh well, we'll reassign them to the military. That should provide enough jobs for everybody that we just assigned to just move along and make our colony a little bit more habitable. With three farmers, you know the farming changes? I, I like the farming changes. The farms, you used to have to do like really, really big, huge, realistically sized farms. And then you would just put arbitrary amounts of people on it from what I remember from the original beta. The farms now are smaller and they're less realistic, but at the same time... It's easier and it's more condensed and it's easier to keep track of with the new system. We have supplies discovered. Let's see here. Where is that? Oh, he found two sulfur and three buckets of lacquer. Okay. 41 fungus stew is now finally finished off. We do want to watch our provisions because we just got a huge crop of immigrants that just came in. And so we need to know if we're breaking even or not. If that goes down, then later on... Oh, look, he's talking to a fish man. He's been like, hey, what's up, fishy bro? How you doing, fish homie? You don't even know me, and you won't even slow me. Apparently, he's an open-minded individual. Oh, hello. How are you doing here today? So if he talks with the fishman, does anything bad happen? He's poorly fed at the moment, but he could kind of solve that by going and feeding himself. Hopefully, our military doesn't mess with that guy, because I really don't want to kick off a war with the fishman right now. I would prefer it if we were just chillaxed with the, film, or with the fishman and... Just didn't bring down any sort of hell on ourselves. So food appears to be at least breaking even. It hasn't gone down. And in fact, it's gone up a little bit. I think the biggest time when that gets effective, though... Oh, we've got native gold over here, too. That's gold that was stolen from the natives, in case you didn't know. It was easy access! What do you expect me to do? Just walk away? We have guns. I mean, it's just the way things seem to pan out. It's a dick move. It's a dick move, but sometimes... Societies are led by the dickish. In fact, I think most of the time societies are led by the dickish. I may try to put in a longhouse around here somewhere just to make this a little simpler. So I think what happens with these guys is they start off in the little an incoming trader. Oh, cool. We got people coming. Where are they from? Oh, they're from von Stallmark. Okay, so we can actually we can make friends with the Germans right now. So that's good. I, I, I feel like we should probably make friends with the Germans. Given this is like the 1890s, 1880s, given everything that transpires in like 20 years or so, it might be good for the purposes of staying neutral later on. Just being like, hey, oh, the traitors have fled due to an attack. Oh, there was a bandit attack over here. Why are they attacking? What are those? I don't know what that is. Oh, shit. A tragic death. So we lost a man. Bandit corpse burial. The death of bandit August Blaggard has ignited a furious debate in our fine colony about what is to be done with the corpses of bandits left within colony borders. Some insist the bandits deserve a proper burial in the traditions of the church, while others demand they be left outside town to rot like lawless brigands. What is to be done? I say we just hoist them up from the walls. Like, we do this road warrior style, where we make, like, a fence, and we just hang those dudes. Just hang them from the fence and let them know brigandry will not be tolerated in the colonies. Ah, uh, but no. We'll show respect for the dead, I guess. We've got a tragic death. What this means is that we actually need to get some graveyard space all nice and eked out. I think a graveyard would do just fine like right here. I don't know what those were, but they came after us. So we'll put in a graveyard right here, and we'll just use this as graveyard space from now on. We lost a man, though. A man down. He's laying in a large crater. A stack bushel of scrap iron. Yes, bury our heroes. You gotta play Rule Britannia very, very softly. Rule Britannia. Britannia rule the waves. And there it is. 
So we have buried our dead, even though there's a dead guy still laying right there. That sucks, though. And this guy's kind of... He's, he's idle at the moment. I'd despair, too, if random things came out of the sky and tried to blow me up. I have no idea what that was, but it sucked. Basalt debris. I can do that with clear debris. Okay. Clear debris. The cheese has no place here. No debris. And provisions did look like they took a big bite out of them at the beginning of the day, but that's to be expected because they all eat in the morning as far as I know. Hopefully it'll recover. I think we've got enough. Let's see here. We've got 39 bushels of corn, so yeah, it should be fine. Maize. I'm sorry. I don't know if there's a difference between corn and maize. I know that mazes are often made inside of corn, and that corn is the god of, like, kick yo ass, but, oh, you guys still haven't done that yet. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. I didn't want you to do the thing that I ordered you to do anyways. They only have seven assignments left, so they should get to it pretty shortly. Sometimes I like that about games like this, though, where you can just, like, chill and, like, watch stuff unfold like you're not immediately bothered by something. Hematite nodes right there will more than likely be useful later on, so let's go ahead and grab those before they go anywhere. This chalk, is that what that is? That's rhyolite. It produces stone. Okay. Got coal right there, too. And judging what I know about steampunk culture, we're probably going to need a lot of coal, so... We'll do the best that we can with it. Sorry about that. I always forget to, like, log out of Steam. I got too many Steam friends right now. Just bumping and grinding and rolling. And I'm in love with my Steam friends. Okay, so we got stone pellets over here. We did lose some people, though, and that's got me worried. How is Farmer Stew doing? Are we just doing those ad nauseum? I think we are. I think we're just doing those nonstop. Still keeping an eye on what's going on over here. Before we get new immigrants, we're going to have to do something in this area. She's grieving, so I, I suppose that's healthy. Everybody got to grieve every now and again, especially when weird octopus monsters come from the sky and then detonate on top of you like hand grenades. It's a dangerous society we live in. You got to watch out for it. Can we build roads anywhere? Is that possible? Like infrastructure, like roads, or... Okay, so we need more overseers first. So I would surmise initially... Let's go ahead and we'll do a reasonably sized middle class house right there. And we'll stack a couple people inside that one. We'll do what we gotta do. Over here in the brick shop, we have no clay left, actually. So we're gonna have to dig up some clay if we really want to make this happen. And I think the best place to do it is gonna be right there. Just go get all that, go get all that, and go get all that. Brickwork, I love brickwork. You don't see it too much anymore. Everything's made out of, like, stucco and plaster nowadays. You don't see brickwork too often. They're down in here taking care of that business. Which should be done pretty soon. I mean, they've been hacking on that shit for, like, a day. And so food is at a looks like it's at a slight decline at the moment a very slight decline it went down by about 10 over the course of the day now we may have just had an off day with our harvest fish people vandalism response a fish person has been witnessed destroying colonial property again we cannot allow the fish people to rampage about smashing cabbages and defacing structures how will you respond we must punish the vandal uh, let's respond with words rather than violence and see if maybe oh he destroyed our crops okay that sucks why would he do that, though? Because I didn't bother him. Maybe they just enjoy getting into mischief? That's a stereotype, though. You can't treat all fish people like that. You can't just be like, oh, fish people always destroying shit. That's how you end up with problems, you know? Some fish people, well-adjusted. Some fish people got a destructive vein in them, though. They got a destructive vein that needs to be handled. We sitting on 20 planks yet? Good, we're sitting on 20 planks. So in 20 planks, I'm gonna do... Give me... Some rugs. Where are the rugs at? Can I not do rugs from here? Oh, we got wall shrines, though. Yeah, do like... I don't know, ten wall shrines. Everybody loves a wall shrine. And then we've also got... Give me some practical beds, I guess. We've got a ceramics workbench, too. Yeah, make a ceramics workbench. I guess we'll bring it over to here and we'll put it inside the ceramics place. Hopefully we'll get a bit more clay before this pops off. Yeah, I know we don't have the supplies that we need in order to make all this, but... It's unfortunate, too. Weather returns to normal. Ceramics workbench is done. Fantastic. Gotta make sure that they're all staying on their grind and getting stuff finished off. I think our wood supply is probably pretty dominant right now. I don't think we have to worry about that too much. Are they still chiseling away on this over here? They are indeed. 
It's a job that's going to take a little bit. Can we figure out how much stone is left inside of these? Like, figure out if the job's worth it or not? Because I actually really need them to get to that first. There's an incoming trader. Hopefully they make it through the bandit camp. Because if they don't, it could be a mess. Do I have to assign somebody to trade, or can I just do this when they arrive? Man, they made this dude carry a pallet of bricks. What a bunch of douchebags. I'd be so mad if I woke up that day and like, We are going to trade with the English. And then they're like, Yo, Gunther, carry the bricks. I'd be like, what? This dude got to carry pillows and like feathers and shit. How come I get the bricks? Oh, man, ain't them the bricks sometimes. Ain't them the bricks. And see, this is why we got issues. This is why we got issues. So they've brought in a stack of paper. So they've got five paper there. And I assume that I can just gather this. There's no trader in the depot. Are you sure? Oh, it updates. Okay, so we've got a cube of clay. You know the bric-a-brac is tempting, but it costs three ten a piece. What do I have here that I'm not doing anything with that I can just, like, get rid of? I've got to have something in here. I've got the gold ingot. Yeah, let's trade the gold ingot. And if we could turn that into profitable trade with our neighbors. I'm not going to be greedy. I don't want to sit on something that we have loads of. Logs are also worth a decent amount. So, I mean, since we're kind of a lumber colony right now, it's the most basic thing we can be. Maybe bring that up. And the stacks of paper, like... If I wanted to make this happen, I could get rid of some of this wood supply. That's not that bad. And looky there, I propose it. And the trade was good. And so the people from Von Stallmark should be happy with us now. They're bringing back stacks of cubes of clay, so he should be getting back to work very, very soon in the ceramics factory. Food is dropping, so I'm going to have to open up a new farm, I think. It may be due to the fact that we lost that harvest over on that side, but I don't know. We just don't know, so it could go either way. Did they finish off this stone down here? They finished off most of the stone down there. Very, very nice. And so now they're evening out this area. Man, look at that guy's badass hat and epaulettes. How come I don't have epaulettes? Do you got to buy everything? Like, if I buy everything, does it make them happier with me? Or will they, like, bail out? Or how does that work? I suppose the trade post is just the trade post. I don't know if anybody actually needs to be in there or not, but... Our disturbance is 53. There's a fish people vandalism response. Solve it with words, please. Oh, yeah, he destroyed our crops again. So, see, that's something that... That hurts us. That hurts us pretty badly. It causes us to starve out a little bit. Fish people apparently have a massive problem with corn subsidies. It's an issue for them. But what this does mean is that if I go to here... For hunting and surveying now... I've got 50 stacks of paper... And I need a standing desk. Okay, can I do that with bric-a-brac? Is that possible? Let's go over here. Wall shrines are getting made. If I wanted to make a... Ah, there it is. Make a standing desk, please. In fact, make two of them, just in case. We'll have extras so that we can sell them like trade goods later on because they seem to be kind of valuable. I don't know if they're just worth the cost of whatever it is that we put in or if they're worth a lot. The traders are leaving the depot. Are they happy with our exchange, our mercantile exchange? I don't know if they were happy with it. Hopefully that helps us out with our reputation. I can't imagine that trade would make our reputation worse. Alright, so they're doing their thing over here. They gotta gather building materials though still. I know this guy's trying to mack out bricks on this side. He's trying to mack out some stack out. Actually, we could check this with our faction relationships. Looks like we're still neutral. Okay. I am mad. Supplies were discovered. We found a Saskatoon berry pie, two sulfur, a bottle of laudanum, and some chalk. So that's pretty cool. Recent reports from passing airships indicate that a group of fish people carrying goods has been spotting walking towards the sea in the vicinity of your colony. I mean, if they want to come in and trade, that's fine. I'm okay with it. Like, I'm totally okay with that. We're producing wall shrines over here. Glad to see it. And now that we have the wall shrines, let's go ahead and get those moving. We'll put them just, like, right by the door in each of these. There we go. 
Get like one right there. One right there. Just try to like bring things up a tad, you know, get a little fancier. Oh, we can put wall shrines inside the, uh, interesting. We can put wall shrines inside the archaeology slash naturalist lodge. Naturalist is what they used to call a scientist back in the day, in case you didn't know. So if you haven't gotten to that part of your history classes yet for my younger viewers, a naturalist used to be the word for scientist. You call him a natural something rather, like a natural philosopher, I think was the word, or a naturalist. And then we started calling him scientist later on. Good, she's building the middle class house there, so that'll be nice. Am I sitting on enough? So what we need to do now is we actually need to focus a bit. Well, when they finish those, we will. This workbench right here can make practical beds, though. I would suggest we make at least eight practical beds. We just keep those trucking because we're going to have to put them in these houses so that our middle class people can sleep. The shrines have been mostly installed, which means that that brings that up to a plus one. Good. Plus one means that it's a typical place. We probably need to add rugs or something to make it a little bit nicer. We also have our standing desk, which with our naturalist's office, we can now put that right there. And that should allow her to make maps and to run around and do the geology thing. And she should be able to check out these nodes now where she can go out and do mineralogy reports. Essentially, she can do that thing that we did. I used to do mineralogy reports all the time. It's so basically what that entails. You go out, you find the rock bed that you're looking for for a particular group of people, township, whatever. Or it could just be for purely academic purposes. You go out, you find the thing that you're looking for. And then you take a sample of it, you bring it back to the lab, you cut it into cross-sections, little tiny filaments that you will then, or I'm sorry, little paper-thin cross-sections that you then put under a microscope. You run different types of light through them, different types of polarized light, different types of rays and whatnot, and you can figure out what all is in there. You can find your opaques and your silicates and all that kind of stuff. And you have to do those surveys. That's, if anybody's planning on doing any mining, you have to do a survey out there to determine whether or not it's actually fiscally viable in order to open a mine there. Eugenia Will gives a cry of inhuman terror. I was overcome by a vision of robed figures gathering as if in worship, but it was an abomination like no service held in a proper chapel in the Empire. The ritual was building towards some purpose and some terrible end which was obscured in shadow. That doesn't bode well. I don't know how I feel about that one. That's straight troublesome. Alright, what you guys got going on for me? So if I've got beds ready to go, I'm just going to plan those out to be put in as soon as they're ready to go. And so we've got nice beds now. Go one right there, one right there. One right there, and one right there. We're going to bunk them up serious in this place, though. There we go. So we've got all eight of our overseers now taken care of. And in fact, that only raised my overseer quality by one. I was hoping that by building a bigger one, I would maybe get two, but it's all right. I can live with it. With these beds, what is the quality of the beds? Oh, really? It's still minus one to put in one of those. Okay, so this building over here is going to need help. We should probably look into maybe putting in some wall shrines. Like, what kind of stuff can go in middle class houses or overseer houses? We've got rare paintings. We've got practical cabinets. We've got plinths. We've got table and chair sets. We've got exterior lamps. But those take a ton of bric-a-brac. Middle class rugs. Practical cabinets are probably the best way to go. The best bang for your buck, anyways. Did we finish off with that? Let's go with practical cabinets now, please. We'll make ten of those. And we've still got a lot of work to be done. But things are forming up for us right now. I do think our colony is getting stronger. And our colony is getting much more manageable. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments down below because we are out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. This is a sponsored series that I'm doing on Clockwork Empires, which actually turned out to be quite a bit of fun. I will see you all in future episodes. I'm really, really happy to see how this has developed. Check the game out down below in the description if you wanted to get it for yourself and kind of play alongside me and tell me what I'm doing wrong. I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for stopping on in, everybody.